Hi, this is Manfred Spitz from Enduro Park Hechlingen. I will be chatting with Andy Dukes all about off-road training in this episode of Ride and Talk. Enjoy. Greetings BMW Motorrad fans, Andy Dukes here again. I've just returned from a trip to the BMW Motorrad Enduro Park in Hechlingen, one of the leading off-road training centers in Europe. It's a gigantic playground for GS riders, with over 45 kilometers of gravel roads, single tracks and forest trails, steep slopes and descents, and all manner of natural and man-made obstacles. They've been teaching BMW fans all the necessary skills to ride off-road there for over a quarter of a century. Close to 4,000 participants come from all over the world to join courses there every year. And it's a place where many big ideas are born, from round-the-world rides to qualifying for and even participating in an international GS Trophy event. While I was there, I grabbed a quick chat with the Enduro Park's chief instructor and owner, Manfred Spitz, a fantastic guy who's made it his business to inspire and help countless GS riders discover just what they, and their bikes, are capable of with the right training. Okay, so welcome Manfred. It's great to be here with you in Hecklingen. So tell us all about the history of the Enduro Park. Yeah, the Enduro Park was starting in 1993. Before we started here in Hechlingen, we turned around through Germany in uh, different stone areas and the plan was to find one basic trainings area. And this was, yeah, Hechlingen. So it was originally a stone quarry? It was a stone area to prepare, uh, to put our stones to prepare mm -hmm. streets in Germany. So for, for many, many years and... Uh, After, yeah, the owner was old, he closed the stone area and, yeah. And you created a paradise for off-road riders. What size is it, Manfred? Now we started with uh, 26 hectares. Now we have close to 30 hectares. Yeah, it's, it's uh, like a paradise. And how long have you been here? I stay here more than 24 years. And what's your position at the park? Uh, to begin... I was a normal instructor, and in 2008, I, I wrote a concept about how can we improve the trainings program and, and uh, install a, a travel program. And um, in 2008, I get contract with BMW to do as an own company, a company called uh, Enduro Park Hechlingen Limited Company, and uh, I'm the owner. And uh, yeah, our team is at the moment around about 50 people. And you never look back. So tell me, why the need for rider training, for off-road rider training? Obviously, there's a, a massive fun element, that's clear, but there's also a, a safety element as well, isn't there? To ride in off-road, we know if you ride in an off-road area, you are a better rider on a motorcycle. So you have so good feelings. You can. It has to do with, uh, with uh, feel. If you feel... A slippery rear wheel if you feel a slippery front wheel so you can handle the first time it's always a bad situation and you are afraid and you do wrong things but if you feel a one times a second times third times so you feel comfortable you can handle you have practice you get feelings a balance and and, and this is what we can do in off-road with a slow speed with between 20 and 60 Kilometers, you can feel all the situation, how it feels. If I brake too hard, it's like to scratch a little bit on the ground, so, but then I have to release the front brake. And, and all the situation can we do in off-road very, very easy. And um, with this feeling, you sit on your own bike, you feel more comfortable, and this is you're also preparing for the street. If you had a bad situation on the street, you can handle. Without practice, it's not possible. Yeah, that's a very good point. And I guess there's also the point that if you buy a GS and you only ride it on road, then you're missing out a, a whole lot of things that you could be discovering, aren't you? Yeah, if you ride in GS, you have a beautiful motorcycle. And I look back, why buy a rider a GS? He saw a lot of pictures. Hey, this GS can do traveling on road and off road. But now a lot of people have no experience in off-road. Then this is the point where they say, hey, we go to a trading to see is it possible to do in my own way, with my own motorcycle to have this experience, this beautiful life or, or the GS in, in different countries. More than 60% of our customers have never experienced in off-road. They come to us, 
And then we start in a really easy way, step by step, also a little bit more. And after training, and it's a big difference on one day. They come with no practice, and after this, the library is not like this. And so they say his own product, his motorcycle. Oh, I can do this with this GS. This is unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, it's not just discovering what uh, the bike's capable of, but also discovering what they're capable of. So how exactly do you structure your training starting right at the beginning? We offer in every day. As a, I prefer always to come for one day training. So if you have no practice, if you have a little bit practice in on-road, we talk about six months you should have practice in on-road. So riding on on-road should be fine. Then you can come to us for one day. And we offer in every trainings three different levels. We have beginners. We mean beginners not so much experience in on-road. Uh, a long break distance as a young rider. You have practiced and family business and then you have a break for 20 or 30 years. So, and then you start again. So We call them uh, born-again bikers. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so we say, this isn't so beginners. We go really, really slowly. Then we offer also a middle group. If you have a lot of experience in on-road, if you are a tough rider in on-road, if you have visit off-road a little bit by yourself, but not really uh, a plan, how can I ride a motorcycle on off-road, then you are correct in a, in a middle group. And the professionals, we talk always, if you have a lot of experience in on-road, if you have own experience in off-road, if you have visited a training, so you can start in a professional group. And we start with all three groups and the same exercises. Everybody has a long break. It could be the first time in this year on a motorcycle, so we start with a really, really low level. And after 15 minutes, we can see, is this group yeah. one level or is it too hard? Is it too easy? And after one break, we do it. Then we talk between the instructors and we say, hey, this people is right in my group. This people, it's too easy. So we switch him to the middle group. In the middle group, these people, mm, it's too hard. It's too tough. So we have to go a little bit back and everybody will find his group and then... Can you uh, normally tell by just looking at the way someone is standing on a motorcycle uh, very quickly what sort of level they're at? We start really, really slowly. So with complete simple exercises and then we explain how to stand in a correct style or in a standing position. And then you have to feel, move a little bit and it's correct holds a handlebar, two fingers on a clutch and all the things. And then we, we start and um, the first two, three laps, it's quite difficult for, for the normal rider. But after this, it's always more feel comfortable, 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 and then it's easy. So after one hour, say, it's like, hey, I stand always in the office. I cannot sit. It's, yeah. So do people travel from all over to Hecklingen to do the training? Yeah, we have uh, in Hechlingen 20% international riders, uh, the most from Germany, Austria and Switzerland. And uh, we have, uh, this is quite, quite nice, we have uh, more and more girls, around about 15%. That's great, and I'm sure that number is going to keep on uh, rising. Do people use their own bikes or do they use the school's own bikes for this kind of training? It changed. 10 years ago, we had only five or ten rent bikes. So most of our participants came with his own bike. Then we had more and more rental bikes. Then it was 80% rental bikes and 20% own bikes. But now, in the last five years, we have 99% rent bikes and uh, only one training with our own bike. So. And we prefer it. If you come with your own bike, you are always thinking about, oh, it's my motorcycle, so I have to protect it. And, uh, it's too difficult. Now I do not this exercise. So rent a bike from us. We have all models here. You are free in your mind. Try to do this and this and this and exercise, and so you can improve your rider skills. If you're always thinking about, oh, motorbike, and it's good. So it's not possible. It's not the right way to learn. You absolutely have to clear your mind, don't you? So... How far can you take the training? If you start as a beginner, how many levels can you go through and what other courses can you do? Because I imagine once people have done the beginner's course, they come back for more, don't they? Uh, if you start with a beginner's and you can improve on this one day really, really well, you can go into the next week and the second level. So it always depends how is the level on this day. 
beginner level, beginner level is not always a beginner level. So it always depends on the participants. Yeah. If you have a, we talk a good group in a beginner, so you can do more. And do you also offer additional opportunities, for example, adventure travel training or tours, things like that? Yeah, we do it three times per year. This is a special training. We call it a travel workshop. So it's a combination about atmosphere, bonfire, barbecue, sleeping in a tent in the area. Uh, then we start with a normal one-day training, also different levels. And um, then we stop at 3 o'clock p.m. And then we go in different workshops. One is how can I handle a GPS? Is it necessary to travel with GPS or, or is it possible only with a map and, and so on? Other group goes to, we call it a repair motorcycle. If you have a problem on a motorcycle, how can you change your wheels? What has happened if I have a flat tire? How can I fix it? And so on. And then after two hours, we switch the group and all what you can have on, on, on a travel problem with motorcycles or navigation. So, and so we can talk about this, that which uh, kind of spare parts you should with you and so on, all these things. And the second day, we prepare the motorcycles with, with bags, with a tank bag, with equipment. So it's uh, like you go travel and it's a complete different situation. If you ride on the first day with motorcycles, normal, and then you have uh, 40 kilograms with bags and tank bags and uh, equipment on it, it's completely different. And you have to feel, is it possible to go off-road? Is it not possible? And uh, yeah, it takes also time. And you, have, you can only learn if you do it. So to become a certified instructor, not everybody can do that. It's a difficult process, isn't it? It's a difficult process. It's... The normal way, we look for the instructors. We get every week, uh, how can I build up a, to, to become an instructor? So, But we are a big family and we look for persons, girls or men, so what is we are a part of our family. You need a really, really good uh, what is the word? Uh, writer skills to teach. And this is uh, quite difficult to find, but we have... Uh, At the moment, around about 36 instructors, three of them are girls. They have to be yeah, a good ride on road and off road, has to experience about traveling and so on. It's like if you stand here in Hechlingen, you are Mr. BMW. You need some knowledge about the motorcycles and, 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 and. And then we say, okay, you are the right person. So we do a test, a riding test. And on this riding test, more than 80% is not possible to, to do this riding test. A lot of people more think about, I'm a really, really good rider. I've had a lot of experience, but if you ride here, you can see it's not enough. It's a good rider, but it's not for enough as an instructor. And then we trainings together, more than around about 10 trainings in our trainings area. Uh, then we know him, he knows us. So is it possible to work with him? Is a sympathetic guy? How it's handle our customers and all, the, all these things? And um, yeah, and after this, we sent him to the BMW Instructor Academy for one week. So how to learn to stand in front of a group, how to teach on the right way. Is it uh, short and quick and less is more, all these different things. And on this point, see, most of our instructors have problems. Be on time. Don't talk too much information to the customers. This is always a problem. If you... Stand here and you have a group and the instructor is talking about 20 minutes about tires and this and this. It's not funny. It's a writing training. They so will have fun. Short explanation, then a, a good demonstration, then practice for the participants and then a good feedback, how you can improve it, what is wrong, what is right. This is the right way and this is the most complicated thing. Yeah, there's a, a whole lot of skill sets required there. Um And not, of course, not everybody can make the grade. So do you also have very close links with uh, rider training centers overseas that are also representing the BMW brand? Yes, we have. We know the most um, Tom Wolf, Malilovo, uh, TVT Motor, Enduro Park, Andalusia, and so on. We are connected. It's a big family to become an instructor. It's always the most time it's here, the rider academy, and so we know the most of them. Yeah, and you all keep in contact. That's great. So 
What would you say you love best about your job, Mumford? My job? If I get the question about what is your job, then I answer, I work in a stone area. <laughs> But um, after 24 years and after 10 years to be the owner of this company, it was the best decision of my life. How many people would you say you've trained in that time to ride off-road? In only in my case, poor, that's a lot. I did around about 3,000 trainings. And in every training we have uh, between five, eight participants, so you can more than 20,000. Yeah, so that's a, that's a lot of riders. That's incredible. So what would you say, you know, when it gets you out of bed every morning, what, what do you love about coming here? Is it the people that you, is it seeing the changes on the people that you teach? Yeah, it's, it's changing. So the people where come 20 years or 30, yeah, 20 years before us, they have more practice. So this is uh, what we can watch. Um, but the atmosphere, the, the fun is always the same. And if on, on my favorite this is to see, or I like to see if you have beginners with no practice to ride a motorcycle, on-road or off-road, and you see after one day how good they are. It's so nice. This is my motivation to do it, everything. And we have always nice people. They come, they have a good time here. And this is what we, what we, what we like. If I, if I can work with people always smiling and, hey, it's nice to be here and have a good time together. It's the best way that you can live. When you love what you do, it doesn't feel like you work a day in your life. It's always nice. I, I come more than 20 years and every day I say, hey, it's nice to be here. So it's, it was the best decision. Yeah. You're a lucky man, Manfred. Now, Absolutely. tell me about the latest GS bikes. How good are they compared to some of the previous generations? The last 1250, it's always quite difficult. If we have a model before, so we said, hey, this is a really, really good motorcycle. And then we heard about a new motorcycle is coming. Then we think about what is possible to improve. It's not possible. We have a really good motorcycle. What is going on? So then you ride five minutes with a new model and you say, hey, it's not possible. This is it's completely different. Hey, how to improve a really good motorcycle to a better motorcycle? But it works. BMW can do this. And it's a, a big difference between 1200 and 1250. You have to ride, then you can feel. It's not the power. It's not the styling and so on. It's easier to ride. It's more comfortable. Uh, you have more power, but it's good to handle. So it's beautiful. But they're all good, of course. You know, there's no such thing as a, a bad motorcycle, in my opinion. Certainly not a bad GS. So of the past 40 years of GS bikes... Which model would you say is your favorite? Oh, I like 1250 Adventure. I like all adventures. But I have also in my garage the old one. I have an old one, R100GS Paris Dakar. I have one. And sometimes on the left side is standing the old one, and on the other side is the new one. And if you compare it, hey, it more than 30 years in between. So it's, it's, it's a really nice picture. You should do it. But all motorcycles, you have fun. You can do it a trip. You can do it a ride to the next job or whatever. And it's fun with both motorcycles. I love it. I ride sometimes my old one, but the most times the new one. And my favorite is the 1250 GS Adventure. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, I guess your favorite is also whichever bike you happen to be riding that day. So... So how would you say that the uh, GS series of models has changed your life? How would you say the GS has changed your life, Manfred? My life? Yeah, so I had the last 30 years of 25 years. So a good time with, uh, with BMW, with GS. So I could travel a lot. I, I could see different countries, uh, Uh, on road and off road, and if you stay with in Namibia with a GS, you stay in South Africa or whatever. <sighs> yeah, it's it's unbelievable. It's so a good time, and uh, it changed completely. But I'm so lucky. I'm yeah, 
I'm so satisfied to do this and to, to meet people around with the same spirit. This is unbelievable. And if you're a rider with a motorcycle or a GS rider, hey, you are connected. You are connected. And then you have a good time together. Uh, in 2017, I, I met Sinje in, in Tajikistan, in the middle of nowhere. Hey, it was so a good atmosphere. Four weeks ago, I met there uh, here after three years. It's a GS star story. Yeah, it's, a, it's um, I guess, another way of saying it is small world, one small big GS family. GS family. And that uh, this is around the world. Everybody's thinking in the same way. Everybody has the same feeling. And, and if you can think feel if you stay with a motorcycle one night outside uh, we were in the desert with a GS or whatever this is an atmosphere you can look in the sky and say hey please stop at the moment it's so fantastic what would you say is your favorite GS moment you know the, the best time you've ever had while riding your GS I have so much stories but to ride in Tajikistan it was It was a magic moment, yeah. It was so a good time. And also to meet Sydney, uh, a girl alone with a, with a, with a motorcycle, with a GS, uh, and, and the atmosphere. And uh, I, it, it was a really, really one of my best ride with a GS. But also to Namibia. I was last year in Namibia. It's unforgettable. This is if you ride and you see the animals and you are feeling alone on this big country so it's yeah you ride and say hey never stop this trip please and so yeah it's unbelievable yeah certainly those are two countries that are still on my bucket list where where still on your bucket list where do you still want to ride um my plan i want to go to bolivia so this is on my list bolivia argentina um this is And I hope so we can go next year to Mongolia. This is on my list, on my next step, what I'd like to do. Still a lot to do. So what would your advice be to somebody who is new to the brand and is thinking about buying a GS? Um, if you, if you buy, uh, think about uh, to buy a, a motorcycle, try a GS and you will find the right motorcycle. Absolutely. And combine it with a training, so you have the training and the experience with a GS. So it's the best way. And you will, I'm sure you will find a motorcycle for your life. And also a community of friends, a welcoming community. If you are part of this community, it's so nice. So this is, um, you find for every situation, for every what you like to do, information and, and all people about in this community are open and, and keep support you and this is one nice family it's a really great big GS family and uh, I can say start come in this family and you will never forget that it's a good time yeah and it's nice to know that you've uh, started a lot of people off on their GS journeys adventure travel off-road riding whatever so How can people find out more about Enduro Park Heckling and Manfred? You find all information about the Enduro Park Heckling on our website, on Facebook and Instagram, and uh, yeah, on BMW site. So you get all the information about what we do, what we plan for the future, and we install new programs to improve everything. And we have a lot of, and this is really interesting, we have a lot of people say to a call before the training. They need more and more information and say, say, hey, this is my first time, I have no experience. If I good enough, so, and say, we have a lot of calls every day about the training. They need so much information and they have not in, uh, only on the website, so, so they are a little bit afraid. So, what is going on? Uh, can I do this? And, and so, this is the reason why we do a lot of calls with our customers to explain to prepare it, what is going on, how and which style we do it. And I think this is very, very important. So Sounds like it's a really warm and welcoming and fun environment where people can really start the next stage of their GS journey. So thanks ever so much for talking to us, Manfred. It's been great to be here with you. Thank you, Andy, for, for your time, for interest. And uh, yeah, you have to test it, our training in our 
trainings here in the Enduro Park Hecklingen. And um, yeah, I say welcome. Cheers, Manfred. I'll be back in Hecklingen for sure. Because one thing's for certain, you never stop learning to ride better and I can always benefit from more training. We all can, in fact. Just ring these guys up if you need any advice or assistance. They're a friendly bunch. And by the way, if you want something closer to home, bear in mind that the Enduro Park in Hecklingen is a role model for many more GS playgrounds in various countries, including Spain, Russia, Thailand, Poland, Great Britain, the Netherlands, Romania and South Africa. So, wherever you are, there's no excuse. Why not make the most of the potential of your GS and bring your adventure aspirations to life with some dedicated off-road training, which just happens to be great fun too. Bye for now.